Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media, and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. I'm gonna spend a couple of episodes talking about secrets to prayer. A lot of people incorporate prayer in their growth, their spiritual growth, of course, but also in how they manage stress. So I'm gonna share some do's and don'ts about prayer. There are some don'ts. So before we get into that, If you are enjoying the principles I share in these podcasts, I would invite you to check out my books on Amazon. I have two devotional books, a workbook, Bible study, and a book on correcting distortions in your view of God, and another book that you have been hearing me talk about called Anxiety, Depression, and Helplessness, Keys to Break Free. So pick up a copy for yourself or a friend. Today, I'm going to be talking about some things you can find in my book, Sheep Hear His Voice. If you are watching this on video, you can see the cover of the book in the background there. And I mixed up my background. I hope you like it. Leave me some comments if you do. So let's get into today's episode. So along with our spiritual life, our connection to God, a lot of people incorporate prayer into how they manage stress and concerns. So I am going to give you some secrets of do's and don'ts in having a healthy prayer life and how to use prayer in a way that helps you grow spiritually and also help you find more peace. So let's start with the don'ts. When I was growing up, there was a cartoon, I don't know if it's still around, called Goofus and Gallant. And every month it would show Goofus who would do things that were irresponsible or mean. And then his brother Gallant, who always did what was right. So for some reason, I was thinking about that cartoon and I thought, okay, let's start with the mistakes people make. Now, obviously, it doesn't make you a goofus if you make some of these mistakes, but I thought using that cartoon would help you remember these points. And then we'll get more into the practical and effective ways to use prayer in your spiritual life and also as you attempt to cope with the different things that challenge you and how to invite God into that. And I made this list based on common mistakes that I find people make as I work with them and give them suggestions of how to be healthier, how to be more effective, how to incorporate their faith into their coping. So the first don't is don't substitute prayer for action. In Ephesians 6 verse 13, it says, having done all to stand. So what I find is a lot of people think that uh, trusting God means you pray and then you don't do anything about whatever is bothering you. Now, there are some times where we just can pray. There really isn't anything else we can do. But many times there's a step we might need to take. For example, if you need a job, just praying Lord, send me a job, he may not respond to that because it's our responsibility to make a resume, uh, submit our applications, probably on some kind of a platform. 
where our resume is going to get viewed. So there are steps that we need to take and then things that the Lord can take over. We can ask him to open doors, to close doors. But a lot of the time, there is something we need to do to help address our concern. And that goes with my next point of don't. Don't expect God to do everything. Uh, there, It's a balance. We want to follow the Lord, but we have a certain amount of responsibility. So I think I explained that. Another thing is don't ignore warning signs that he sends you. Let me give you an example. So while you're praying or shortly after you've been praying, you might feel kind of a sense in your spirit really is where it happens, that the Holy Spirit is communicating with your spirit, that Maybe somebody seems a little creepy to you, or maybe you feel a sense that you need to do something different. You may have heard that a lot of people on the morning of 9-11 had a sense, go to work a little in a different route today, or why don't you stay home today? You can work from home, or maybe you need to take care of something else, or maybe your child needs something. And they sensed that they needed to change their routine on that day. So for whatever reason, there were people that the Lord prompted, maybe their family members were praying for them, that the Lord prompted, don't do this. Don't do it this way. And many times those promptings come from the Lord as uh kind of warnings. And so that's a dramatic example, 9-11. But there can be more subtle things. There have been times where um, I took care of something before I got in the car and I just felt like it was important for me to do. And that extra three or four minutes, I missed an accident. So it, it, it can be little things, but the Lord looks out for us. And so if you feel like something needs to be taken care of, that there's something you want to switch up, that might be the Lord. And you may know, you know, in a short amount of time, whether or not it was the Lord, it may not always be. But the more that we get accustomed to listening in our prayer time, the more that we can be effective throughout our day. And the Lord will give us uh, sensations, perceptions, ideas. And again, it will be very subtle much of the time. He speaks to us most often in whispers, whispers in our own spirit. If you have Jesus as your savior, then you have the Holy Spirit living in you. We know that from the book of Ephesians that he seals us with his Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will be communicating with you if you are taking time to cultivate your relationship. So that leads to my next don't. Don't do all the talking. <laughs> In a conversation, you don't, I don't like it when one other person is doing all the talking and I don't get a turn. Now it's different at work, of course, but in my personal life, it's like a conversation is an exchange. So Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. That's how I named my my book about growing and being more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, that if you're doing all the talking and you're multitasking, you won't hear what the Lord is trying to say to you, either through the Bible or in the promptings within your, your spirit connected to the Holy Spirit. So you want to make sure you don't do all the talking. So here are the do's. And I'm going to read a couple of verses out of the book of Habakkuk, which is in the Old Testament. And I like to read out of the Amplified Bible. It's one of my favorites. It gives a lot of depth to a scripture so that um, a lot of times there, there's a richness to the, to the uh, text in the original languages that we don't get when it's translated into English. And you get all of that in Amplified without any extra work. So... This is what Habakkuk wrote, and this is related to expect God to answer. 
I will stand upon my post of observation and station myself on the tower and will watch to see what he will say within me, listening to the Holy Spirit, and what answer I will make to the perplexities of my complaint against him. So in this situation, I guess Habakkuk was complaining to God, but he was also listening for how the Lord might direct him. Now, in the Old Testament, people weren't filled with the Holy Spirit like they are now because that was before Jesus died on the cross. But he would still, it would say that he would place his spirit upon someone, usually one of the prophets, so that uh, the Lord could communicate not only to the prophet, but then the prophet would um, communicate to the people what the Lord wanted them to know. So it's different now. We don't have to rely solely on another person. The Lord can use a pastor or a friend to speak to us, but we can go directly to the Lord now. And we see that in Hebrews chapter four, to go boldly to the throne of grace. So it's great that if you belong to a community of faith, but you don't need to wait for a religious authority to communicate to you. That's that's not how God works now. And then in the same chapter of Habakkuk, verse three, it says, the vision is yet for an appointed time and it hastens to the fulfillment. It will not deceive or disappoint, though it tarry, wait, because it will surely come. It will not be behind on its appointed day. So that's kind of complex, but the just to simplify that, you probably have heard that the Lord might answer in three different ways. He could answer yes, he could answer no, or he could answer not yet. And there are times that you'll just sense that you should continue to pray for something. And there are other times you may just feel peace. Okay, it's in the Lord's hands. I've done what I can do. And sometimes the door just closes and then you'll know that the answer is no. I remember a long time ago, there was a job I really wanted. It was before I got into the mental health field and things were sort of coming together for me to get this position. And um, everything was kind of in place and I was waiting on a decision. And the decision was no. They weren't going to create that position. So I was disappointed, but it was a clear answer. The answer was no. And so I continued to do what I was doing, that the Lord didn't open a new door. And so in prayer, we don't always get what we want. The goal isn't like a vending machine. I like to talk about vending machines where you put in your prayer and you get out your answer. And if you bombard God enough, you get what you wanted. Um, a relationship with God isn't like that. If we're yielded to him, and I'm going to talk about that in the next episode, if we're yielded to him and we want his will, of course we want what we want, but if primarily we want his will, he knows what's best for us, then we accept if the answer is no. And if the answer is yes, hallelujah, and we can thank him. And if the answer is wait, then you know we continue to do what's right we continue to cultivate our relationship. Another thing you've probably heard me talk about is use scripture in your prayer. Uh, when I'm praying for a person that I know is making bad decisions, and maybe I've said something and then I, I really can't nag them. I, it's not a good idea to cross boundaries and nag people. But I might be concerned. It's like, I just know this is a bad decision then I might pray a scripture, Lord, you say in Ephesians 1 that you can flood the eyes of our heart with light. So I'm asking you to flood this person's heart with light. Another verse I pray for myself and other people is from Psalm 1611, that he shows us the path of life. So I might pray, especially if I'm concerned and I don't want to nag a person, Lord, show them the path of life. Make it clear to them which way is life. So that, they, so that they can choose the right path if they're confused. Now, a person may know something is wrong and they might do it anyway. So prayer doesn't guarantee, we're, we're not praying our will. 
We have to respect another person's will and we want to pray according to God's will. So that that's sort of a tricky thing to learn. But as you get more mature in your faith and as you begin to understand more about how God does things, then you can find that balance of praying scripture, praying for other people, and then yielding it to the Lord and trusting God to work on things that maybe this person isn't ready to learn yet. Another do is you want to have a lifestyle of abiding. What does that mean? In John 15, Jesus says, abide in me. As we abide in him, then we learn about how he does things. We get direction and peace in our life and as we obey the things that we know are right, then we grow. And as we grow, we become more peaceful. We become more confident that the Lord is looking out for us. And we're able to release things to him a little bit better. I mean, there's some things that are just really hard. But the more that you understand the Lord by reading his word, and the more that you learn about the exchange of communication in prayer. You'll be in a more peaceful place as you go throughout your day. You may find that the Lord will send you a strategy so that maybe that's your part. You don't know what to do and you get a strategy. I, I've mentioned a lot of my creative ideas come either during a prayer time or right after one. And I just want to cultivate that connection to the Lord. As you learn how to cultivate that, then you want to protect it. You'll want to. And then the last point that I'm going to share today about a secret to prayer is unity. If there's another person that will pray with you, a concern, you need a job, you uh, need an increase in your income, one of your children is in trouble then it tells us in Matthew, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And so we want to invite another person. Now be selective. You don't want to trust somebody that's going to be gossipy and say, will you pray for me that my daughter's pregnancy goes well? My daughter isn't pregnant. I'm just using that example. Pray for favor. That's another good one. If you're in a stressful situation, if you need a door to open, you can ask the Lord to give favor to you or to your spouse or to your family member. Favor is like God just makes somebody like you <laughs> because you're obeying the Lord and he wants to bless you with a job or a house or um, an opportunity. So we can ask the Lord to, to give us favor in a situation. So those are some do's and don'ts about prayer that can help you be more peaceful, grow in your faith, and also just have more confidence throughout your day. So some of these principles are out of my devotional book called Sheep Hear His Voice. I would invite you to check that out, maybe get a copy for yourself. That one's in color. And so I actually created the photos that go with each lesson. So let me pray a blessing. Lord, I thank you that you care about everything connected to us and that you enjoy listening to us, but you also enjoy giving us strategies, giving us ideas, speaking to our hearts so that we can be more confident and we can be more courageous and we can be more peaceful. So bless this listener to know what they can implement to increase their ability to have effective and calming prayer and to draw from you the strategies they need for life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm gonna talk more next time about secrets to prayer. This is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. And if this episode helped you, share it with a friend.